second Doctor Who video blog, or as uh, Michael would like to call it, a vlog. Um, anyway, story so far, as everyone knows, uh, we have just been told that uh, the new, or the second half of Series 6 is going to begin on August 27th. Um, this is excellent news. We've been waiting for this uh, for quite some time. I actually thought that it would uh, take a lot longer. Um, I figured probably October it might uh, kick back in because we're only looking at what, six or seven weeks if they're doing uh, 13 episodes uh, and then we'll have to wait a little while longer for, um, for the Christmas special. So. I know, that's great. So right now we're going to have, uh, we'll have actually Doctor Who overlapping with Torchwood. Um, so, wow, like, we go two years without Torchwood, and all of a sudden, bang, we've got, you know, more than our fair share, that's for sure. Although, it isn't anywhere close to enough, uh, as my good friend Michael Sean Shannon uh, repeatedly says, and I wholeheartedly agree, why can't it be longer? Um, even Torchwood, I mean, they've got this great big massive budget now, um, why can't they go 20 episodes instead? But, and again, 20 episodes on, on one story arc like that, um, I don't really think that would, uh, would work too well. I think people would be getting pretty bored of it by episode 12 or 13. Personally, I wouldn't, but there you go, some would. Just seems to be the way Torchwood is going right now. Um, people either love it or they hate it. So, hey, what can you do? Right? Everybody's got their own opinions. That's the way it's going to be. So, um, I'm personally loving Miracle Day so far. Um, it just seems to be an evolution of, of Torchwood. True, it's not the same as uh, season one and two. Um, I really miss that. Uh, team that they had back then, it just, um, even though Torchwood's great now, don't get me wrong, Gwen's still there, Jack's still there, Reese, the whole bit, it, it just, it still isn't the same thing without Owen and Tosh, uh, the, that chemistry that they all had, it was, uh, it was pretty cool, it worked pretty well, so, um, yeah, but, uh, I think it's a natural progression on the way they're going, it's similar to Children of Earth, but, it's not British anymore, it's not American, it's it's something new. Uh, and that's the only way it can go, right? Um, if we didn't have what we've got now, Torchwood would be gone. Uh, I don't think it would have come back if Russell hadn't done what he'd done. So I'm just happy to have it back, you know, plain and simple, just like that. Um, so, new series continuing on August 27th. What do you think? Pretty cool. Um, go to the Cloister Bell page, uh, Doctor Who Sanctuary, for updates and uh, new clips. And some of the new clips are crazy. They are, um, as Michael said, uh, one of the upcoming ones uh, looked like it was uh, shot at the Overlook Hotel, and that's exactly what I thought when I first saw it. Uh, the movie The Shining. Um, great story. Scared the willies out of me in the day, that's for sure. And then uh, here we go now. I'm uh, actually curious as to where they uh, they shot that. And I uh, didn't realize there could be more than one hotel that would look like that. Anyway, um, so it's it's looking looking pretty good so far. And uh, this is just on behalf of all the fans. Dear Mr. Moffat, could you please, please wrap up the story arc that you had going since the beginning of season five with the cracks in the walls everywhere. They were a result of the explosion of the TARDIS in reverse order. Who caused the ship to explode? Who has that sort of control over the TARDIS, even though it's the last one in the universe, um, as far as linear thinking goes? But, uh, who was the big bad? Who was the, the, that uh, that other TARDIS belonged to in the logic? Um, as makeshift as it was. Um, and when it disappeared without a pilot, it just sort of off and went. Even though Michael did mention too, and I agree with it as well, um, it did look like a Jagaroth ship from uh, the 1979 story of uh, City of Death. It did, it really did. Um, 
check it out. I like that story. It's, it's a lot of running, uh, silly running, and a little bit too much. Take a cab, uh, hop on a bicycle, steal one if you have to. I broke into the cafe, and uh, anyway, uh, beside the point. Um, but yeah, once it left, all of a sudden, next thing you know, it's uh, the silence, or I've been guarding it for who knows how long. Um, yeah, it's down underneath uh, the ground there in that uh, beginning of uh, season six. All of a sudden, there it was. Hmm, okay. Um, so yeah, so we got that that big story arc to, to wrap up. And of course, we accumulated a bit more along the way. Um, how did the doctor get shot? Was it really him? Was it a ganger? Uh, you know, the whole bit. Uh, so where do we go from here? So I really, really hope that he wraps it all up and gets it figured out because personally, I kind of miss the Russell T. Davies years where, sure, he'd have this great big story arc going on and it would go not necessarily from story to story, but it'd be little hints here and there. Um, back when, when uh, Stolen Earth and Journey's End uh, came about, all it all came together, and all the companions and stuff, uh, Jack, Sarah, Jane, Rose came, uh, came back from the parallel world, and Mickey, and, and uh, Rose's mom and all of it. Um, everything sort of came together at the end, and it was a great big climactic story, and Davros was in it, and New Daleks, and they all got destroyed. And, uh, but it was wrapped up. Uh, it took a while, took a whole season. Uh, and then season five comes along, and right at the end I was thinking, all right, who's this big bad that, that, that's been causing all this trouble all this time? And come to find out, he didn't let us know. Season six goes, uh, starts up. What do we have? We got more questions. I mean, it's in the hands of, of Moff right now. Um, I have complete faith in him. Um, I'd love the show. It's it's a lot more mysterious than, than what it used to be. Um, consider the impossible astronaut, and then like, watch that episode, and then go way back to the start um, with the first episode of the first series, um, the current revised series that is, with uh, Christopher Eccleston, and have uh, and watch the episode Rogues, and you see the difference in, in quality, and the lack of cheesiness now. Um, just take a look at uh, Plastic Mickey, and, uh, and the big uh, garbage bin, uh, Oblin down the street. Yeah, so that's what I call cheesiness right there. I mean, it was a great story, the whole bit. It was uh, the starting of it all over again. Um, the old series renewed in, into the 21st century, so that's the way it had to go. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I really like the way it's going now. Um, I think we all do to some degree. Sure, again, my opinion, but it's here. And that's uh, that's all there is to it. And I don't really see it going anywhere anytime soon. It's here to stay. Uh, 50th anniversary is coming up soon. Like Michael said uh, in, his, in his vlog earlier today, we're really looking forward to that. Who knows who's going to be in it? No pun intended. Uh, I don't really think uh, you'll see Tom Baker in it. You never know. Um, Jamie Jones actually made a good point. Uh, Putting them in it now, considering what they look like now, um, Colin Baker is, is a good example for that. Uh, if anyone saw The Trial of the Time Lord, the last two episodes, I believe it was called The Ultimate Foe, um, Colin Baker now looks more like Mr. Popplewick uh, than he does the Doctor. Uh, yes, Onslow from uh, Keeping Up Appearances, yes, that's the guy. Um, only without the, uh, the shirt, or the sleeveless uh, vest shirt. Kind of a scary thought there, kids, but uh, yeah, I get a little chill just thinking about uh, seeing Colin Baker showing up more like that now. He's not the, uh, the stand proudish, large, larger than life uh, Gallifreyan that, uh, that we came to know back in the day, even Commander Maxill and the Ark of Infinity, uh, even if you saw him in Blake 7 as uh, Baby the Butcher. And that was a, that was a great one. He was a lot thinner then, even than he was when uh, Doctor Who started up. Um, so yeah, 
bringing a lot in the back. Mm, even time crash, that was pushing it for me. Um, Peter Davison, my first doctor, don't get me wrong, will always be my number one all-time favorite. Uh, he was in it when I really, really got into it. Uh, it was the doctor, Nissa, Tegan, and Adric. That was my crew right there. But, uh, yeah, the comparison, if you couldn't be bringing them back after that much time. Um, stick closer to now. Paul McGann, love to see him in that. Um, there's been some interest expressed uh, recently about uh, the 1996 movie that he made, uh, The Enemy Within. If you haven't seen it, check it out. There's a bit of uh, cheese in it, but um, they did try to bring it to the States. Some of it was filmed in Canada too. Um, different production, the whole bit. Uh, just, just cast a lot of that aside. The new TARDIS was great. Interior is all completely different, a lot more gothic, the whole bit. Uh, some of the scenes on the inside were great, fantastic. Um, Paul McGinn, great actor, fantastic doctor, good energy to him, the whole bit. Uh, the Master, played by Eric Roberts, Julia Roberts' brother. Yeah, I, was, uh, I was iffy on him, uh, he was a little bit uh, you know, melodramatic in certain places, but uh, Grace, great. Um, uh, yeah. So check it out for sure. You'll love it. Um, so, yeah. So that brings us up to date now. Um, only about a month to go. And only a couple more days to go, too, for episode four of Torchwood Miracle Day. Looking pretty exciting. Um, I wonder if they'll tone on the, the sex scenes down at all. That was, uh, yeah, you can see why there might be some controversy around that. I mean, I don't really care one way or the other. That's, that's you know, the way the ball bounces for them, like, cool, whatever, but uh, don't be shocked when people get uh, a little bit upset about it, that's all. Um, and then I think they ended up cutting the Canadian and UK transmissions for that, so yeah, I can understand that for sure. Um, just in case some younger people are watching it, so they go, oh, no, please, Dad, please, Mom, let me watch Torchwood. No, there's, there's nothing like that this time around, and then they see that. Some parents would probably never let their kids watch it ever again. Um, I think it might get to 14 or 15, who knows. Some kids will try to watch anything they can and there are certain ways, obviously, on the, on the computer to do it. So, Anyway, that's all for now. Um, peace, love, as Michael would say. And uh, I have a little something for Michael. He expressed an interest in seeing the Judoon earlier with, uh, with Fez. The uh, dad was on there. So, uh, that's for you, bud. Ro ho 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 Alright everybody, be cool and uh, see you on the cloister bell.